when I first prepared for this particular exam, I was overwhelmed until I focused on this type of questions, practicing according to this domain. And I tell you, I passed on my first attempt with well over 80% average score. Today, we are going through 25 prep questions. These are 25 real case exam questions that you will likely find in your ISC2 Certified in Cybersecurity Certification Exam. The ISC2 Certified Cyber in Cybersecurity Exam is divided into five domains, and these questions have been arranged according to the five domains. So we have security principles, business continuity, access control, network security, and security operations. And you can practice and know how you are doing in each of these domains. If you understand these 25 questions, you have covered about 60% of the areas where ISC2 Certified in Cybersecurity likes to test their students on. These are top 50 ISC2 Certified in Cybersecurity exam questions according to domain. They've been organized by the five domains of the ISC2 Certified in Cybersecurity exam. We are only taking 25 of these questions. If you want the entire 50, or you want the 75, I have another uh, copy of it that contains 75 questions. And inside the kit, you have over 200 questions that you can practice if you get the kit. But here, we're going to look at 25. These 25 are the top 25 that you are likely going to find in any of these, uh, anytime you are taking the exam. So let's take from questions. We're starting with the domain security domain one which is security principles so what is the primary purpose of using digital signatures in the cryptographic protocols we have option one to encrypt data for secure transmission two to verify the integrity and authenticity authenticity of data three to generate random cryptographic keys four to prevent unauthorized access to sensitive information The answer, the correct answer is to verify the integrity and authenticity of data. So I've put a simple explanation here. We say digital signatures provide non repudiation and verify both the integrity of the data that it has been altered and the authenticity that it has not been altered and the authenticity of the sender that it came from the claimed source. So this is what we make use of. Uh, digital signatures. This is why we use digital signatures in cryptographic protocols. Let's go to the next question. What is the main advantage of using a symmetric encryption algorithm over an asymmetric encryption algorithm? Option one, symmetric encryption algorithms are faster and are more efficient. Asymmetric encryption algorithms provide better security. Asymmetric Symmetric encryption algorithms require fewer resources. Asymmetric encryption algorithms are easier to implement. The correct answer is one. Symmetric encryption algorithms are faster and more efficient. So symmetric encryption uses the same key for both encryption and decryption, making it computationally faster and more efficient than asymmetric, which uses different keys for encryption and decryption. We are not talking about which one is more secure now. We are just talking about the efficiency, you know, which is the main advantage of symmetric over asymmetric. Let's go to the Next question, what is the purpose of using a salt when hashing passwords? Option one, to add flavor to the password. Option two, to increase entropy of hashed passwords. Three, to make the password easier to crack. Four, to decrease the security of hashing algorithms. Let's see the answer. The correct answer is two. 
to increase the entropy of the hash password. So a sort is a random value added to a password before hashing to ensure that the same password will produce different hashes. This prevents what we call rainbow attacks and increases the entropy randomness of the resulting hash. So entropy is talking about randomness of the hash that will result, you know, so that if there's a, there's a form of attack called rainbow attack, rainbow table attack, where people gather different uh, hashes of passwords, of known passwords, and they are hard. So they try it, you know, randomly. But when you sort it, even though they know known password, they will not know known sort. A sort can be a random word that is added to, you know, a password before it's been hashed. So because a sort is difficult to know, so it prevents such attacks called rainbow attacks. So it increases the entropy of the hash password. Let's go to the next question says, which cryptographic algorithm is vulnerable to collision attacks and should not be used for generating digital signatures? One, AES. Two, RSA. Option three, MD5. Four, SHA256. Let's see the answer. The correct answer is 3, which is MD5, the message digest algorithm 5. So MD5 is MD5 is vulnerable to collision attack where two different inputs produce the same hash. So when you hash two different types of well, no, two different words, they produce the same hash. You know, is a collision uh, vulnerability. And is it's it's you know it's an attack that is, is a vulnerability that's been responsible for attack you know by people guessing a word and hashing it and then getting the same hash that you know the original word intends to be so this makes it unsuitable for digital signature where a message integrity is critical critical so for because of int the integrity of messages that have been sent in, and used in digital signature so this MD5 cannot be used is because it's vulnerable to collision attacks or, or should not be used. What is the primary purpose of using a digital certificate in public key infrastructure? One, to encrypt data for secure transmission. Two, to authenticate the identity of users and devices. To generate random cryptographic keys or to prevent buffer overflow attacks. Let's see the answer. The correct answer is two, to authenticate the identity of users and devices. So digital certificates bind a public key to an entity's identity. So it allows others to be able to verify that, that particular identity. So this authentication is fundamental to establishing trust in digital communications. So that is what the proper primary purpose of digital certificate in public key infrastructure. So these are just five questions under security principles. Let's move to another domain. Most people fail cybersecurity exams, not because they didn't study, but they studied the wrong way. Don't let that be you. When I first prepped for this particular exam, I was overwhelmed until I focused on this type of questions, practicing according to this domain. And I tell you, I passed on my first attempt with well over 80% average score. My name is Olali Kainlori. This is Cyber Control Interface. I've helped hundreds of beginners pass their foundational cybersecurity exam. And I've packaged my methods inside a kit called the Cybersecurity Success Blueprint that many people have used to help them pass their exams on the first attempt. Stick with me till the end and I'll show you how to get this exact system that I used in prepping and passing on my first attempt at these exams. Remember, if you want all this practice questions just comment success blueprint in the comment sections and i will send you a link where you can download this for free and practice yourself so the next domain we are going to is domain two which is the domain on business continuity 
Disaster Recovery and Incidence Response. Question, what is the purpose of implementing a disaster recovery plan in a cloud environment? One, to prevent unauthorized access to cloud resources. Two, to ensure continuous availability of critical services during a disaster. Three, to optimize cloud resource utilization. And four, to automate software deployment processes. Let's see the answer. The correct answer is two, which is to ensure continuous availability of critical services during a disaster. Disaster recovery plan focuses on restoring IT operations and data access after a disaster, which minimizes the downtown time and ensuring business operations can continue. Disaster recovery is a very fundamental thing that an uh, organization's operations needed to put in place. Uh, this another question, what is the purpose of conducting regular tests and exercises of a business continuity plan? One, to minimize resource utilization during normal operations. Two, to validate the effectiveness of data plan and identify areas for improvement. Three, to increase profitability of organization. And four, to prevent all types of disasters from occurring. Let's see what the answer is. The correct answer is two, which is to validate the effectiveness of the plan and identify areas for improvement. So regular testing identifies gaps, validates procedures, and ensures personnel are familiar with their rules, making the plan more effective during actual disaster. So we are talking about business continuity plan. So this is a plan that you put in place before any incident happens. So when the incident happens or when the event happens or when the occurrence happens, you know, you are regularly, you, you, have, you are already familiar with what happens, you know, what should happen during the incident. So during the incident, the plan is more effective. So regular testing identify gaps, validate procedures and ensures personnel are familiar with their rules when an incident or during an actual disaster what is the purpose of a business continuity plan one to prevent all types of disasters from occurring to ensure that the organization can continue critical business operations during and after a disaster to optimize resource utilization during normal operations for to increase profitability The answer is two, which is to ensure the organization can continue critical business operations during and after a disaster. A business continuity plan focuses on maintaining business functions during and after the disruption, ensuring minimal impact on operations, revenue, and reputation. So this is why we have a business continuity plan, ensuring that business continues, you know, when something happens. Let's scroll and move to... Uh, we are still having two more questions under this uh, domain. What is the primary objective of a disaster recovery plan? One, to prevent all types of disaster from occurring. Two, to ensure that continuity of critical business operations. To optimize resource utilization during normal operations. To increase profitability. The correct answer is two, which is to ensure continuity of critical business operations. A DRP, which is a disaster recovery plan, specifically focuses on restoring IT system data and infrastructure to resume critical business operations 
following. Remember, the word is critical business operations following a disaster. That means critical business activities can still go on when a disaster has just happened. Let's look at one more question. Okay, so what is the main purpose of an incident response plan? One, to improve employee productivity. Two, to prevent all security incidents from occurring. Three, to allocate resources for routine maintenance tasks. Four, to provide guidelines and procedures for responding to and mitigating security incidents. The correct answer is for which is to provide guidelines and procedures for responding to and mitigating security incidents. So an integrated an, an incident response plan establishes a structured approach for detecting, containing, eradicating and recovering from security in incidents while minimizing the impact. So basic purpose of incident response you know plan is to know what to do during you know, an incident or when an incident occurs, knowing what to do. The plan is prepared before the incident. So, if you want more questions, remember, just put a question or if you want this full package, just drop a comment, secure, uh, success blueprints in the comment sections and you will get access to this particular uh, file that I'm using and then you can practice this just the way, the same experience that you are having here. So, the third domain we are looking at is domain control concepts. What is the primary purpose of a cloud security group in a public cloud environment? One, to provide physical security for cloud data centers, to manage access controls for cloud resources, to optimize cloud resource allocation, to enforce regulatory compliance in the cloud. The correct answer is two, which is to manage access control for cloud resources. So the cloud security groups act as virtual firewalls, you know, that control inbound and outbound traffic to cloud resources, implementing access control policy. Remember, access control basically is controlling the way you access data. You know, so this is the main purpose of cloud security groups. Uh, another question. What is the primary purpose of role-based access control in cloud environments? One, to prevent distributed denial of service, DDoS attacks. Two, to enforce regulatory compliance. Three, to monitor user activities and access patterns. Four, to restrict access to cloud resources based on users' roles and responsibilities. So the correct answer is four, which is to restrict access to cloud resources based on users' roles and responsibilities. If this is helping you so far, please like this video, click share, and subscribe to this channel so that others who can find this very valuable information, no flops here, please like, subscribe, and share with people that you know will need this information. So stay alert and watch through how we solve these 25 questions together.